Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coats on back order, and I am once again here at Heroes Beacon, our Pokemon League in Uptown St. John, because we have another special event coming up, the Pokemon TCG Sun and Moon Burning Shadows pre-release event. Now, of course, as I always do, I'll take you inside. We'll show you what the basic breakdown of a pre-release tournament is, what you can expect to find if you go to a pre-release tournament in your area, and we're going to check out a lot of the awesome new cards, I'm sure, of this new expansion. I don't even know what they're all, go they're all going to be yet. I know there's Charizard G. X, we've got Necrozma GX, Tapu Fini GX, there's a third or fourth one I always forget. It has been shown on the Pokemon website, but I've lost it. We're probably going to see it in here at some point, though, because we're going to have a fair number of people showing up with a lot of, what would you call them, pre-release boxes, that's it. I was thinking, what's the term? Pre-release boxes, pre-release packs, whichever. You're going to see a lot of those. So without any further ado slash rambling from me, let's pop on inside and get things started for the day. The Pokemon TCG pre-release tournament is a special event held at Pokemon Leagues throughout North America. At these events, players can pay an entry fee set by the league organizer and obtain a special pre-release pack containing a 22-card pack, one exclusive foil promo card, and four booster packs of the newest expansion coming out up to two weeks before the expansion officially goes on sale in North America. The 22-card pack forms a basic core of a custom deck containing Pokemon of two different energy types, including some evolutionary chains of these Pokemon, along with a number of trainer cards. The foil promo card will correspond with one of the Pokemon types in this 22-card pack. The four booster packs are your standard random assortment of 10 additional cards from the upcoming expansion. Once the League Organizer announces it's time to begin, players will then have 30 minutes to open all of their packs and construct a 40-card deck comprised of just those new cards, along with any basic energy cards they require which will be provided by the League Organizer. While the normal rules of deck construction state that a deck may not contain any more than four copies of any particular card, that rule does not apply to decks constructed during a pre-release tournament. That means that if you happen to pull five or more cards with the same name out of your 22 card pack and booster packs, you can include as many of them in your deck as you'd like. The tournament then gets underway with each player testing their newly constructed deck against one another. The matches are shorter than in a regular tournament with only four prize cards per match. A participation prize is awarded to all players who complete the full tournament, and that prize is an additional three booster packs of the latest expansion. Something important to note regarding pre-release tournaments is that, after the tournament concludes, the usual rules of deck construction apply to this particular expansion, which means these cards are not permitted to be used in play Pokemon events until the third Friday of the month in which this expansion goes on sale. After that, you're free to use these cards and include them in your custom decks however you'd like. And now let's check out a match in play here at the Burning Shadows pre-release. So I'm a little bit late on getting this video set up here, unfortunately. They do have a couple of turns under their belt here, but we see player one is starting with an Oddish. They've already played themselves a Professor Kakui, and player number two has a Wobbuffet in the active spot, and on the bench we have an Alolan Rattata and Necrozma GX. They have also played a Lily already. So player number two is in a pretty good spot to have a Pokemon GX and to be lucky enough to have pulled a basic Pokemon GX from these booster packs. Very cool stuff. As player number one decides to drop down a looks like a Hoot Hoot and an other Oddish onto the bench. Go for the Poison Powder from Oddish, poisoning the Wobbuffet, and you're noticing maybe the Wobbuffet is not perfectly legible as far as you know, English is concerned. I couldn't get all the card images in English, unfortunately, so I have some of the Japanese card art to show off, but you can see the Pokemon at least so you know what's going on. So player number two does draw their card. They drop another Alolan Rattata to the bench, and they play in Psychic Energy to the Wobbuffet, which already had one. It needs three Psychic to be able to use its attack, however. So they have to pass their turn back to player number one, who draws their card for the turn. And we see there's a pretty fancy looking full art card in player number one's hand. We'll see that in a little bit, but we don't get it played just yet. So they do play out the Nest Ball, which is also always a very good card. Search your deck for any basic Pokemon and put it directly onto your bench. That is pretty good if you're going to have, oh, I don't know, say Necrozma GX, or other basic Pokemon GX, of course. Those could be handy. But they opt for an Alolan Rattata of their own. So... These two, uh, the booster packs that these two players got must have been Darkness and looks like player one had Grass, player two had Psychic probably. So Alolan Rattata is played down. Now a bit of a misplay occurs here unfortunately. They immediately evolve into Raticate which is not permitted. Of course Rattata would have to be in play for one full turn before it can evolve up. But the fortunate thing is here nothing is really affected in this match. They do play Gloom from hand to evolve Oddish which is perfectly fine. And the Alolan Raticate, it's not targeted by any damage, it's not uh, moved around on the field, so they could have played it next turn, and it didn't really affect anything. But the Gloom goes for the Stinky Scent Attack, which is one of the most aptly named attacks in all of Pokemon TCG. 
The opponent's active Pokemon is now confused, so Wobbuffet, unfortunately, is taking some pretty serious conditions here, poison and confusion, but they do add the third energy they need for whatever the attack is named. I do not know, unfortunately, but it looks like they can do 50 plus or 50 times if they would flip a heads, but they unfortunately flip a tails. Of course, they're using the competition legal coin flip die so that coins don't bounce all over the tables. Wobbuffet does hurt itself for three damage counters through Confusion, and the Poison adds another one damage on there. So 70 damage currently on Wobbuffet with a maximum of 120 HP. A 50 damage attack is all that's going to be needed to take down... Or no, wait, they took that. I must have miscounted the damage. Anyway, it's looking like they only have 40 HP remaining. Hmm. So, we see here that player number one has drawn their card. Let's see what they decide to go for. So this is the turn that they could have played the Raticate, and it wouldn't have affected anything, so everything is back on track here. The one, I guess, kind of downside about doing the pre-releases is I'll set my camera up to record a match, as you guys can see here, but I'm kind of going around to all the tables, all the matches, helping people answer little questions here and there, so sometimes little plays like that, or little misplays like that, are unfortunately missed, but it's always great when they haven't really had an effect on the gameplay, so that's all right. They throw another Grass Energy onto the Gloom, which can now Razor Leaf for 30 damage. Oh no, wait, I didn't miscount the damage, I don't think, because Wobbuffet ends this turn with 10 HP remaining. And they get to go ahead and draw their card. I guess there's a bit of a discrepancy on how much damage is being done. But I do believe Wobbuffet, <coughs> pardon me, is remaining with 10 HP, as I think that is a Crow Gun? I can't really tell which card that is that we just played onto the player number two's bench. Might be Krogan. It could also be... It's not Esper, because Esper is in the set, but it doesn't look like that from what I can recall. But here's where they start to go for something interesting. They're going to start powering up Necrozma GX, which has a pretty decent powerful attack to it. So they try for Wobbuffet's attack. They do manage to land the hit, and it looks like it does at least enough damage to take down the Gloom, I believe. It must be a 50 times kind of an attack. So the Gloom does faint, but Wobbuffet also faints to its own poison. Not its own poison, I guess the Oddish's poison, but either way, both players have lost their active Pokemon. Both players take a prize. Player number one's prizes are off to the side of the camera. You can't see them, but they are there. Don't worry. And there is now a question of which trainer, which player has to promote their Pokemon first. That, admittedly, I should know, but offhand, I don't. I think it is whoever's turn it was promotes first. Or maybe it's whoever's turn is coming up promotes first. That might be the way they do it, because then, of course, the current active player has the choice to retreat for something more super effective. But player one sends up the Alolan Raticate, as player number two sends up an Alolan Rattata. Interesting combination here, the evolved form versus the baby form. So the Raticate, for no energy, can attack for 10 damage, but if it has a tool attached to itself, it can do 50 more. That is not bad, simply attaching a tool, getting 50 extra damage. And the other attack, I forget what else it does, but basically it does 60 damage. There is an effect, which I, I I can't read Japanese, so I can't really tell you what it is. But I can tell you that the Alolan Rattata can, for no energy, use Focus Energy, which turns Bite's base damage from 10 this turn to 60 next turn. But we see that the Eradicate goes for that simple 10 damage attack. It does not have a tool, unfortunately, so it can't get that boosted 50. Player number 2 throws a Weakness Policy onto the benched Alolan Rattata. Of course, you can probably see what's happening there. If Raticate is in hand, or somehow going to get into hand, they could, of course, play the, uh, or use the powerful attack for 60. So they did just attach the weakness policy. They also play a How to draw three extra cards for the turn. Or was that a Lily? I think that was a Lily. I might have messed up on my card layout. But anyway, we do see evolution into Raticate. Either way, I'm pretty sure they drew three cards off of whichever supporter that was. Sorry if I am very unprofessional with this, but like I say, I was running around everywhere trying to watch these matches. Anyways, they do go for Focus Energy. So player number one draws their card for the turn. Do you happen to find anything super game-breakingly amazing coming from player number one? We see a Sneasel. Alright, that could be game-breaking, depending on what all it can do. That was a card that I never did get to see. I, I saw Weavile, but not the Sneasel. So they just go for, I think they go for the simple 10 damage attack again. So once more, no tool, no boosted damage. And... Or did they not attack that turn? I don't know, maybe they forgot to attack. But they do attach, or player number 2 attaches a Darkness Energy to the Rattata, which can now bite for 60 damage. I forgot to mention, it does need a Darkness Energy to be able to use Bite, so they were kind of taking a chance and going for a Focus Energy 
possibly not being able to bite next turn. But they do the damage, and it is back to player number one's turn. Who is uh, kind of in a bad spot. The Alolan Raticate has only 60 HP remaining, which means in two more turns, the Alolan Rattata could take it out with a Focus Energy Bite Attack. So player one needs some extra cards. They play a How, grabbing another three cards off the top for anything to help them out here. If they could get one Darkness Energy, they could start doing 60 damage back, which is enough for a knockout on the Alolan Rattata, if I'm reading the HP properly. Do they happen to find themselves the Darkness Energy they need? This is kind of what's fun with the pre-release, when you're assembling your deck. Oh, they're just going to let the Rata or Eradicate fall, it looks like, so they're going to power up the Sneasel. Now, when you're choosing your deck from the 40 cards, you got to decide which energy types do you need the most of. You might leave yourself shortchanged on some energy, but you might have too much of another energy, so... Either way, they had the Darkness, they could have gotten the knockout on the Rattata, but looking like Necrozma is going to be powered up kind of seriously as a Heatmore is added to player number two's bench. So, the Necrozma is now powered up. Let me see if I can find the uh, name of the attack there. As the, I think, Raticate goes for the Focus Energy. Good stuff. It's going to be able to use a powerful 60 damage bite on the following turn. Now, player number one, what is their option to go for? Because they're going to lose the Alolan Raticate if they can't retreat it. And it's got a 3 retreat cost, so it's probably not going to be able to retreat anytime soon. They know it's going to fall. They're going to tower, or keep powering up that Sneasel. As I can't find Necrozma GX in my list of cards. I know it's here somewhere. But anyways, that is something else we'll see in just a little bit. As the Alolan Raticate does a simple 10 damage onto the Alolan Rattata. And back over to player number 2's turn. Which Pokemon do they start to power up now? They don't even need to power up their Eradicate, because with a tool attached, you're doing 60 damage. But they go for Sophocles, which is a new card, one of the, uh, it's the Mount Lanakila Kahuna. No, not Kahuna. Kahuna? No, those are the Island Leaders. Anyway, Sophocles lets you discard two cards from hand and draw four new cards. I think that's the first time we've had something like that. So did you find anything amazing to work with? Quickly deciding which cards to be played out. As we know, the, Rat or the Alolan Rattata could simply take down the Raticate. But first they play this interesting new card, the Tormenting Spray. You can see it's a Team Skull item. You choose a random card from the opponent's hand, they reveal it, and if it's a supporter card, they discard it. Kind of cool. It, you do take a chance, so I can't see it being a competitive kind of a card. But you never know, it could come in handy. Making the opponent lose a nice, decent supporter card couldn't hurt. Versus Seeker could always be a thing. But with the new standard format rotation and Primal Clash being taken out for standard, Versus Seeker, I believe, is no longer permitted unless it was re-released in one of the later sets, but I do not recall that it was. So, unfortunately, the Tormenting Spray does fail. They don't choose the right card, possible supporter card. So, player one keeps everything in hand, and Hoot Hoot is added to the bench. So, player two now has a full bench of Pokemon with only... I say with only one of them powered up, but looks like the Heatmore is getting some energy onto it there. And a simple bite attack for 60 base damage, thanks to Focus Energy, er, takes down, brings down the Alolan Raticate. So two prizes remaining on player two side, three remaining on player one side, as Sneasel comes to the active spot now. Uh, again, this is a card I couldn't get the English version of, so I don't know what the attacks do, but I do know that uh, it does 20 damage, and I'm pretty sure the Alolan, Rat er, Alolan Rattata has only 40 total HP, so one simple attack from Sneasel can bring it down. We see a head-tilted, kind of cool art, Knocked Owl played to evolve player number one's Hoot Hoot on the bench. A weakness policy is played, added to the Sneasel. Not sure if it's really going to make a difference, but it might have something where it says if it has a tool, it's powered up. But either way, the Sneasel takes down the Alolan Rattata. And now it's time for player number two's big guns, I believe. As you'll see here, there's only one Pokemon powered up. It's an obvious choice. Necrozma GX takes to the field. And it can go for the powerful Prismatic Burst attack. First of all, the Light's End says the ability to prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from colorless Pokemon, so the Knocked Owl is not going to be any help here. But the Prismatic Burst does 10+, plus, and it says discard all psychic energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 60 more damage for each card you discarded in this way. Pretty decent. Now, interesting, it says card, so if you had something that provided, like, two energy at one time, somehow two psychic energy, 
if it's only one single card, that would only count for one times this of the 60 damage. Interesting to note. Now the Black Ray GX, it says this attack does 100 damage to each of your opponents, Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX. Not going to help Player 2 in this battle, unfortunately. I do not believe Player 1 does have a GX or an EX. Well, obviously not an EX. They're no longer a thing. But for a decent 190 damage, I believe, minus 20 for Sneasel's resistance, of course, 170 damage does bring down the Sneasel. And you couldn't really see it. I was walking around in the background. At this point, I saw what had happened, and I tried to point out, you do realize there's resistance, right? You didn't take the 190. You still took plenty to get fainted, though, unfortunately. So, player 3 still has 3 prizes remaining. Player number 2 is down to 1 single prize. However, the downside is, Necrozma GX is going to need a few more turns to power back up for that Prismatic Burst. So, Alolan Rattata comes with the active spot on player number one side. A simple thing here, if they could somehow, player two could somehow retreat the Necrozma GX, you could go for the uh, Alolan Raticate, which can use its attack for 60 and get the knockout. It's going to take two energy cards, so if they were lucky enough to somehow find a double colorless, which I don't even know is in the set or not, that could be a way to do it. But player one here decides to drop a nest ball down, looking through for a basic Pokemon to add to the bench, of course. And they're going to go with a, oh, cute little Stuffle. As I was rambling about the Necrozma GX, we missed it, but player two did add a Stuffle as well. The card art on Stuffle is kind of nice. It's, it's all about being a stuffed animal Pokemon, right? A stuffed teddy bear. It's floating, well, not floating, but it's resting in this field of, like, cottony-looking flowers. It is so cute. And Alolan Rattata evolves into the Alolan Raticate, which can now, if they can get a tool attached can do a decent 60 damage, or if nothing else, they can still attack for no energy and do 10. So what do they have to work with? It's They probably should have held on to their weakness policy that they gave Sneasel, and kept it for just such an occasion, in case Raticate came into play. But they do a simple 10 damage to the Necrozma GX as Hoot Hoot and Stuffle evolve on Player 2's bench, which is Noctowl and Beware. So the Necrozma cannot attack just yet, they can attach one energy. It's interesting, you could technically power up Prismatic Burst with a double colorless. However, you're not going to get extra damage because you're not discarding Psychic Energy in that way. Now they play another Tormenting Spray, choosing a card from the opposing hand, which was again not a supporter, so we've got two whiffs on the Tormenting Spray. Team Skull, get your act together, come on. So it's actually good for player one though, don't lose any supporter cards. Back to player number one's turn as player two cannot launch an attack. What can they do to try to pull things around here? Because they are on the losing side, there are still three prizes left for them to take. What are they opting to go for? Evolving into their own Beware on their bench. So we've got a couple of Beware, possibly getting ready to duke it out. They do need at least two energy to be able to use their first attack though. And that is, I believe, a coin flip, and if you get heads, you discard the top three cards of the opposing deck. Which, in a pre-release, wouldn't be the worst thing. Because with only 40 cards in the deck, that's taking out a bigger percentage of cards than in a regular tournament. Could you imagine? This just came to mind. Charizard GX, with its GX attack, in this kind of a tournament? You would discard an entire quarter of the opposing deck with its GX. Was it uh, Raging Storm or something like that, GX? Anyway, so Player 2 attaches a second Psychic Energy just for the retreat cost. And they're going to bring up... Which one's it going to be... Of course, the Alolan Raticate, which can hit for a powerful 60, thanks to that tool being attached, and no energy required. Again, that is kind of wild. You can give it, like, what could you give to this thing? A choice band, perhaps. You can do 90 to an opposing GX. All sorts of options of tools you can give it. Some sort of maybe defensive item or a healing item. I don't know. Any possibilities are just whatever you can think of, really. I'm rambling. So, we do see the 60 damage done to the opposing Alolan Raticate. And what can player number 2 go for? Now, we're going to see the card that was drawn some time ago. It is Desperate Measures. It is the full art Escape Rope, which I do not have the image for, unfortunately. I wasn't lucky enough to grab one of those myself. But Escape Rope, full art, regular art, it functions the same as every other Escape Rope. The opposing Pokemon, or opposing trainer, switches one of their Pokemon with a bench one, in this case Heatmore, as the user of the Escape Rope switches second. So Beware comes up on player number one side. Let's see what is going to play out here. With the energy attached to the Heatmore, it does have a two retreat cost, so if they can attach one more energy, they could retreat. Alolan Raticate could come back up. Or they could also go for its first attack, which I think is called Odor Sleuth. 
Now they do attach a second energy, and Older Sleuth says, flip two coins for each heads, search your deck for, or search your discard pile for a card and take it. I might have that incorrect, and if so, feel free to throw a comment below and call me out for not knowing my stuff. But I think that's what I read. They get a Tails on the first one, the second one does fall on the floor, unfortunately, or into their hand, and a second Tails. Older Sleuth is a complete fail, unfortunately. So back to player number one side. They need to start getting some energy onto that Beware. So there is a Grass Energy being played. They need one more to be able to start discarding cards. Two more to do a decent 120 from Tantrum at the risk of confusing itself. But here we see player number two just simply goes for the Retreat, and the Alolan Raticate comes back up with that tool attached. You go for a nice, powerful 60 damage hit. Forgot to draw their card. There they go. And the wear has taken half of its HP in damage already. Only one more hit, and they are going to lose this fight, unfortunately. Did they get the energy they need to at least discard anything? If they can deck out player two before their next turn and there's no cards left to draw, player two will lose. But the downside, and unfortunately, looks like they didn't get the energy required. So they will go over to player two's side. They go for the attack. That will be the knockout. And that is going to be this particular match in the Burning Shadows pre-release. The last prize is claimed, and victory goes to player number two. Now it's time to sit down and check out what cards I get out of my pre-release pack. So we're going to take a look at what I got in my pre-release box here, of course, starting with... Let's look at the paperwork that they give us. Nice artwork of the Fiery Battles and sh Deep Shadows. Uh, we can read that some other time. This is going to give you the basic idea of how a pre-release breaks down, of course. But we're more interested in the cards. So let's take a look at my 22-card pack, first of all, and take a quick little look to the back. There is a code card. Now, of course, what I like to do for these pre-release videos is give out the code cards to you folks out there. So all you got to do is answer a question of the day in this video, and probably by the time the set goes on sale, which I believe is August 4th, I might be wrong on that, but I'll be giving out code cards to people that leave the answer to the comment, or they leave a comment and answer to the question with hashtag QOTD in your comment on this video for a chance to win one of the many code cards I'll be getting from these packs today. And the question is, which card from the Burning Shadows expansion of Pokemon Sun and Moon would you most like to receive and why? Do you like it for card art? Do you like it for playability? Just whatever reason. Just leave a uh, comment down below, hashtag QOTD, which card would you like to receive most and you have a chance to win either this code card or one of the many others, as I said, I'll be getting from these Burning Shadows booster packs. So, we'll take a look at our 22 card pack. Our promo happens to be the Beware. See if we can get a nice close up here with the mix up. Flip a coin of heads, discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. Tantrum for 120. This Pokemon is now confused. If that goes to the side, we have a disgusting pollen. <coughs> excuse me, vile plume. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's basic Pokemon can't attack. That's not bad. Downer shock for 60. Flip a coin. If heads, the opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. If tails, it's confused. I always love a card or an attack that has a coin flip, and whatever result you get, some sort of effect still happens. So that's very good. Got some vile plumes. Got a gloom with stinky scent and razor leaf. We're gonna have some oddish, of course, with poison powder. Poisoning without a coin flip. Lily, we've already seen this card. Professor Kakui, we have a Nest Ball, Timer Ball, a Stuffle, Baby Doll Eyes. The defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. And Tackle does 20. We have a Meow Stick with Allure. Draw three cards. Hand Kinesis, 10 times. This does 10 damage for each card in your hand. Very cool. Another Meow Stick, we have Esper with Perplexing Eyes. The defending Pokemon's weakness is now Psychic until the end of your next turn. The amount of weakness doesn't change. All right, Toxicroak, Poison Jab does 30, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now Poisoned. Poison Boost does 80 plus. If this Pokemon is poisoned, this does 80 more damage, then remove that special condition from this Pokemon. Not bad. Crow Gunk does Corkscrew, Corkscrew Punch for 10, Frog Hop for 20, plus 20 more if you flip a heads. Got another Lily, another Professor Kakui, and a Great Ball. Now that's my 22 card pack, but of course what we want to take a look at is the four random booster packs. We've got one of each in here. Have a Ho-Oh, Tapu Fini, Necrozma, and Marshadow. Let's leave you, I think, for the last. Let's open up the Ho-Oh pack first. Now, I didn't bring my scissors with me, so I gotta rip it open the old-fashioned way. And code card is facing the wrong way. So I'm gonna put that off to the side as well. All code cards are being stored away safely for the giveaway before the set goes on sale. So, let me remember how to do this. These are the uncommons. I think this is the energy. This is gonna be rare and reverse foil. I believe. So let's do it this way. This should be it, I believe. 
common cards, I think, starting with a, ooh, a psychic type Sandy Gas. Absorb Life does 10 and heal 10 from this Pokemon. We've got a Hoot Hoot with See Through. Oh, blur. See Through. Your opponent reveals their hand and Peck does 20. We've got Tangela. Bind Down does 10. The defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. A Dewfighter, Grass type this time. Ambush does 10, plus 10 more if you flip heads. We have an Inke, Constrict, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Tackle does 20. Uncommon, oh, this should be the energy if I did it right. Yes, I did it. Water energy. Uncommon card, Whirlipede. Spin turn for 30 and switch with one of your bench Pokemon. Rollout does 60. We've got a Simi Sage, can scratch for 30 and Leaf Supply for 50. You may attach a Grass Energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Not bad, damage and energy acceleration. We've got a weakness policy, it is back. The Pokemon this card is attached to has no weakness. This should be the reverse foil. <clears throat> Azumarill, thick fat. This Pokemon takes 30 less damage from the attacks of your opponent's fire or water Pokemon after weakness and resistance. Waterfall does 80. And the rare card, which I could feel is something super special, it's gonna be a very nice, is it secret rare, full art, gold rimmed, super scoop up item card. Flip a coin if heads put one of your put one of your Pokemon and all cards attached into your hand. That's not a bad card to open up or retrieve on the first pack that I opened up. I am quite happy with that. I don't have any card sleeves with me today, so unfortunately, I've got to risk the elements. Just put it to the side. It should be okay. I hope. Anyway, pack number one. Let's see if we can keep this amazing luck going with pack number two. Let's go with the Tapu. Tapu Finny. So grab ourselves this code card. Tear this open. And code card, secret it off the side. I think I saw the first card, unfortunately, but it can't be helped. So there's the uncommons energy, and this should be the way. Wait, I think the energy's on top now. Yep, we got a metal energy. There is a sock with quick guard. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. Can't use quick guard the next turn. Kind of makes sense like in the video game. And brick break does 40. Not affected by weakness or resist. Nope, not affected by resistance or any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. We've got an Oddish. We've got Charmander. Can scratch for 10. Flame Tail for 20. There is Meryl. It's like a little crocheted Meryl. Look at that. That's cool. Bubble. Flip a coin. If heads, the opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Roll out. Can do 20. I think this is the last common is a Pan Sage. Vine Whip does 10. Here is definitely... What is this? Rotom Dex Poke Finder Mode. Look at the top four cards of your deck and put them back in any order. Or shuffle them into your deck. That's kind of cool. Nice! I didn't know there's going to be various Rotom Dexes. Seviper, this is a good card. Ability of more poison. Put one more damage counter on your opponent's poison Pokemon between turns. It's kind of crazy. Have four of these on your bench. You're doing 50 damage per turn with poison. Unless you hit with, like, you know, I don't know. Super intense poison of Toxapex GX, perhaps? Anyway, Venomous Fang does 30 and poisons without a coin flip. So these things can be very powerful. Next is a Super Scoop Up. Not quite as amazing as the one that we just saw moments ago, but I'll still keep it. Reverse Foil is going to be an Alolan Rattata. For free, no energy, focus energy. During your next turn, this Pokemon's bite attacks base damage is 60, and bite does 10, but could do 60, of course, if you focus energy first. Rare card is going to be Persian. Interesting, it's not a lowland Persian. Screech, during your next turn, the defending Pokemon takes 60 more damage from attacks, so you could switch out from Persian to something else, of course, or keep Persian active, and Slash can do 100 next turn, or 40, just base damage. All right, so next we'll go with the Necrozma. We're going to save the mythical Marshadow, the newest mythical Pokemon to join Pokemon as, as a general whole kind of thing. We'll save that for next. So grab this code card, if I can open this pack properly. Bear with me, folks, please. Off to the side. All right, so Uncommons, Basic Energy. There we go. I think I've got the trick, or the, the hang of this pack trick now, finally. Got a grass energy. We've got Stuffle again. We've got another Inke. Already seeing the repeat Pokemon. Crabominable for Light Punch for 40. Next is a Moral Oak and Ram for 10. On common against. No, that's another common. Sandy Gas once more. We've got. I messed up the pack trick. Oh no. Reverse Foil Simipore. Scratch for 30. Aqua Reflect does 50. And move a water energy from this Pokemon to one of your benched Pokemon. So, not exactly energy acceleration, but energy maneuverability at least. I don't know what card's next. Rare? Looks like it is the rare card, Meowstick. We've already seen this in the 22-card pack. 
So we got the uncommons now. I kind of like Ribombi. I saw somebody with this at the pre-release. Ability of Honey Gather. Once during your turn before your attack, essentially you may play a Professor's Letter. Or rather, it says you may search your deck for up to two basic energy cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand. That is a Professor's Letter card every turn for the ability. Pollen Shot can do 20. We've got Poe Town. This is a very interesting one, too. It's a stadium, of course. Whenever any player plays a Pokemon from their hand to evolve one of their Pokemon, put three damage counters on that Pokemon. This is going to hurt evolution decks unless they have ways to heal that off. The last card is another weakness policy. So the final pack of my pre-release box is going to be the Marsh Shadow pack. Do we get to see a Marsh Shadow card in this? So far we haven't seen any Pokemon GX just yet, unfortunately, but we do have that nice full art trainer super scoop up. We're going to super scoop away this code card to the side and, all right, I messed up the pack trick. Uncommons, energy, rare, a reverse, yeah, rare reverse foil. There we go. That's got to be the trick right there. We've got a Psychic Energy. We've got a Riolu, can punch for 10, low kick for 30. Next is a Cutie Fly, so I can play that Rabombi to get that Professor's Letter ability. Tynamo, Aqua Shock, 10+. Plus. If your opponent's active Pokemon has any Water Energy attached to it, does 30 more. Kind of not bad, but of course, it's only going to do 40 at most. We have a, as people have said, Dabbing Duskull, Dark Guidance. Put a basic Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench. That could be a Pokemon GX, not bad, and Spooky, Spooky Shot does 20. We've got an Ink once again, I think Uncommons begin with a Porygon 2. Calculate, look at the top 6 cards of your deck and put them back in any order. And Beam does 40. Next we've got Town once again. We have Dusclops, Night Roam, put one damage counter on each Pokemon, both yours and your opponent's. Ooh, an Ambush for 30 plus, flip a coin of heads, 30 more. Reverse Foil is going to be a Passimian. Punch can do 30. And Intentional Grounding. Hmm, interesting name. 90 damage. Discard a Pokemon Tool card from your hand. If you don't, this attack does nothing. So it's almost like it's throwing the tool, I guess. That's kind of a cool idea. Rare card is going to be Heracross. Now, I've seen this card in play during the pre-release. The ability of Guts. If this Pokemon would be knocked out by damage from an attack, flip a coin. If heads, this Pokemon is not knocked out and its remaining HP becomes 10. So it's like Focus Sash continuously. You don't even need to be at full HP to use that. Pitch can do 50 and switch the opponent's active Pokemon, or rather the opponent switches their active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. So that is what I got out of my pre-release box. And again, for your chance to win one of those code cards, just leave an answer to the question of the day, which is, which card from the Burning Shadows expansion of Pokemon TCG would you like to most re or would you most like to receive and why but that's not all because as I tend to do I've gotten another trio of booster packs to open up in addition to those we just open up right now there are going to be even more code cards available for you folks out there let's leave Ho-Oh behind for the time being let's go for another Tapu Fini I don't have another what was the other pack I've got Ho-Oh Tapu Fini who was the other one? Necrozma. I don't have another Necrozma pack, unfortunately. So any Necrozma fans out there, I apologize. I just didn't happen to get that one. But there's plenty more cards for us to take a look at. Uncommon, Uncommon, Uncommon. Energy. And there we go. So we have a nice basic water energy. We've got a Panseer. Flare can do 10. We've got another Cutie Fly. We've got a Pan Pour. Water Gun for 10. Pikachu, Tail Wept does 10, Thundershock can do 20, and if Flip a Coin of Heads, opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Here's a Crow Gunk we've seen. We've got another Surviper, very cool. I want to make a deck out of those guys online. Lana, heal 50 damage from each of your Pokemon that has any water energy attached to it. Cool stuff, not bad. We have a Tormenting Sp Ooh, it's a Team Skull item, Tormenting Spray. Choose a random card from your opponent's hand. Your opponent reveals that card. If it's a supporter card, discard it. Hmm. Interesting. We have a reverse foil wiki. Each player counts the cards in their hand, shuffles those cards into their deck, then draws that many cards. So it's almost kind of like N in a way, but you know, that could be really annoying for Metagross GX as well after using the algorithm GX. Why are there so many cards that force your opponent to shuffle their hand away? That's just that's just nasty and mean. Anyway, rare card gonna be Turtonator, not GX. Flame Cloak can do 30 and attach a fire energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. Heat Blast does 70. So, again, I think let's save Marsh Shadow for the finale. Let's open up a Ho-Oh. Yeah. Grab ourselves that code card. Or grab, you know, basically yourselves that code card. Answering that question. And to the side it goes. So, what does this pack have to offer us? 
The basic energy of this pack is going to be, I'm going to predict, I'm going to say fire. No, fairy. Started with F though, that's pretty close. Rhyhorn, lunge out does 20 and horn drill does 60. Meryl, we've seen that one already. We have a Caterpie, surprise attack does 20, but if you flip tails, does nothing. Great. We have a Moral Lull. We've got Dust Skull once again. Uncommon cards start with Mount Lon Aquila. The retreat cost of each basic Pokemon in play, both yours and the opponent, is one more colorless. So we've seen, was it Sky Arrow Bridge, which lowers retreat cost for Pokemon. This increases it. Kind of interesting. We have another Wiki. We've got Escape Rope. We've seen this before. Uh, reverse Foil is going to be... Ooh, a more Poison Seviper. I've got three now. I just need one more to complete a full deck of these guys. And Rare Card, that's a pretty nice card to get. we got Charizard GX. We've seen this on the channel. Wing Attack for 70, Crimson Storm for 300. Discard three energy from this Pokemon, or three fire energy. Of course, those could be burning energy. They come right back on. Raging Out GX. Discard the top ten cards of your opponent's deck. That is pretty good. Burning off a good one-sixth of their deck. Minus, of course, whatever cards they already have in their hand. So we're going to put you... Oh, my super scoop-up's been covered. I'll put you over there. I'll be sleeving these up when I get home for sure. All right, the last pack and the last code card for you folks to win by answering that question is now underway. Let's grab... Oh, you might have seen that. Hopefully not. And let's go ahead. See what we get out of here. So I'm going to predict, I'm going to say water this time. Metal, dang it! I'm never going to get that right. Venipede, Bug Bite can do 10 and Venoshock does 20 plus. If the opponent's active Pokemon is poison, this does 40 more. We've got a Sandy Ghast, we have Moralol. Next is a Crab Rawler. We've got Stuffle once again. Now the Uncommons begin with a Wabafet. Shadowy Knot does 50 times. This attack does 50 damage for each retreat or each colorless in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. That would be increased by using the uh, Mount Lon Aquila, actually. Something to keep in mind. We've also got Acerola. Put one of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it and all cards attached to it into your hand. Interesting. So eliminating the possibility of a knockout on that Pokemon if it's, say, just a few HP from fainting. We've got a Gloom with the stinky scent once again. Reverse foil is another Acerola. And the rare card is going to be a Weavile. It's Soul, everybody. Rule of Evil. Ooh, this attack does 60 damage to each Pokemon that has an ability, both yours and your opponents. Why do they have Pokemon that hurt your own team? It's kind of painful. And Slash does 70. So that is what I've gotten out of my 22-card pack and all the booster cards, or all the booster pack that I opened up today. I have got a total of eight code cards. Eight? Yes, eight code cards, one for the 22-card pack, and then one from each of the seven booster packs I opened. Once again, for your chance to win one of these many code cards, probably the day before or maybe the day of the release of Burning Shadows, just answer the question of the day with hashtag QOTD in your comment down below, and you go into the running for one of these code cards at random. That question is going to be, of, the, well, of all the cards in Burning Shadows, basically, which card would you most like to receive from the Burning Shadows expansion and why? Again, for playability, do you just like it for card art? Is it just simply your favorite Pokemon in general? Just leave an answer down below with the hashtag and you have a chance to win one of these very, very cool code cards for a either 10-card booster pack online, well, 11 counting energy, or the 22-card pack. And that is it. I definitely got a nice card with this Charizard and perhaps an even nicer card with the Super Scoop Up. Let's zoom in on these right here and just enjoy them. Look at that. So that is going to wrap things up for this Pokemon TCG pre-release tournament at Heroes Beacon for the Burning Shadows expansion. Be sure to leave a like down below if you folks enjoyed this coverage here and let me know any comments down below. Basically answer that question of the day which I gave you for code cards as well as... Did you attend a pre-release tournament in your area? If so, what kind of awesome cards did you get? And how did your matches go? Did you find any really kind of crazy strategies at the pre-release? Did you have any yourself? Did you fight against any? All that good stuff. And if you're interested in attending any of the events here at Heroes Beacon, such as pre-release tournaments or casual days or any other special events like Pokemon League Challenges or League Cups, you can check out Heroes Beacon's website at heroesbeacon.com. Or you can give them a call, get their contact information on the website, see if you can get some information there. And if you're not in the St. John area, you can always go on to Pokemon.com and find their event locator, look up some events in your area to join a Pokemon League for some fun and excitement just like we had here today. 
And with all that, we are done. I want to say thanks for watching today's video. If you want to see some more content from Professor Chaz, there will be some links during the outro to some other videos, such as Pokemon Coliseum currently on the go. also have the regular Pokemon TCG online videos, Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battles, news updates on a weekly and bi-weekly basis, all sorts of good stuff. And you can always subscribe to the channel by clicking on my face during the outro as well for your daily Pokemon content. And we are done. I'm going to head off now. Professor Chaz is signing off. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.